in 10 minutes, Wacky Races continues here on BBB One. But now it's time for Not the News at 8.30 with Jeremy Pacman. Good morning, welcome to Downing Street and in this topsy-turvy, will-he-won't-he week of political intrigue, we begin with showbiz and news that the still hanging on by his fingernails, Tory party chairman Nadim Zahawi is making the switch from politics to comedy, although these days it's hard to see where one ends and the other begins, isn't it? The former chancellor and minister without shame, I'm sorry, that should be, of course, Minister Without Portfolio, is being slated, in more ways than one, to play Young Buster in a remake of the 1980s film featuring Phil Your Boots Collins as great train robber Ron Buster Edwards. As you can see, Not the 8.30 News has obtained exclusive access to the billboard advertising the Netflix <coughs> blockbuster, and we've also been given a sneak preview of rehearsals. Here it is. This is an interview with Ronald Christopher Edwards, also known as Buster, and me, DS Jack Slipper. For the record, also present is WPC Enid Blyton. Now, Enid, be a darling and go and fetch us a cuppa. And remember how I like it five sugars, sweet and milky, just like your ours, your father's. And while you're down there, fetch me ciggies so I can puff some more smoke into this tow rag's face. Five pound a bunch. Lovely English daffodils, new season daffodils, only a five or a bunch. Come on, come on. And I was about to say, get a cup of Rosie for me too, when I thought to myself, me too. Now, we didn't have hashtags back in the day. I thought to myself, though, that's no way to treat another human being in every respect, no less important than me mum or me sister or me auntie Ethel. And I thought, do you know what? They should start a global movement to promote women's rights. What I didn't know then, of course, was it would take 60 ruddy years to happen. Anyway, I could see the Sarge had come over all dreamy-eyed at the sight of Enid's uniform, and I asked him straight out, I asked him, are there two hearts beating in just one mind? And he said to me, chance would be a fine thing, Buster. She's got a groovy kind of love going on with two new recruits to the Sweeney. Right couple of geezers, he reckoned, cocky with it. Told him they should have their own TV show, they did. What a cheek, eh? And now what were their names? Jack Regan and George Carter, I think he told me. Regan, he said, was the smart one. Had him down as inspector material. Carter, though, he was as thick as mince. Be lucky to make Sarge, he said, although he was handy with his fists. So, Half an hour later, Enid's still not back with a tea. And Slipper says to me, he says, oh, I'll be doing the shuffle dance down Mrs. Dixon's care home for retired coppers in Dock Green at this rate, watching endless repeats of gritty police procedurals on satellite TV if they ever get round to inventing such a thing, which back then was unlikely, given they'd only managed to send a monkey, a dog and a Russian with the unlikely name of Gagarin in a space. Anyway... Back to that interview. About time, ain't it? I was gagging for that. Now, we got you bang to rights, Buster. You won't be going loco in Acapulco or anywhere for that matter anytime soon. We know you've done it. We just haven't got the evidence yet. So young Enid Blyton here, thanks for the tea, love, is going to be a darling and make it up. So you need to keep your big ears open. And when PC Plot asks you a question, I need that little wooden head of yours to go all noddy. So, question number one. How'd you stop the train? Well, we was careless, Sarge, careless. No other way of putting it. Me and Bigsy and the boys was staggering home after a couple of pig's ears at the stag in Mentmore when carelessly, like I say carelessly, we decided to take a shortcut along the West Coast main line like you do. And it was a cold old night, so I'm wearing me gloves, but one of them must have fell off and somehow got stuck on a signal and blocked the green light. So what happens next is the Royal Mail train carrying 2.6 million quid stopped, like I say, careless. Should have kept me gloves on, I admit that. Should have kept me gloves on and not had that battery-operated red light with us. 
So what about the driver, Jack Mills, who got it over there with a metal cosh? Was that careless too? Careless, yeah, yeah, very good way of putting it, Sarge, careless. Couldn't have put it better myself. Bruce and Charlie, right, they does a bit of plumbing work on the side, they do. And they only gone and bought a bit of old lead pipe with them. Well, we're all arguing over whether welding or soldering is the best thing for lead when Bruce chucks me the pipe at the precise moment the driver trips over Charlie's plates and falls headlong and hits his loaf on the aforementioned piping. I mean, we didn't have a clue, though we should have done. I can see that now. Didn't have a clue, though, but we should have done. Very careless, very careless indeed. So how do you explain removing the dosh, all but eight of our 120 sackfuls of it? Was that careless? It was, yeah, very careless. Uh, perhaps the most careless bit of all the careless things, what we done that careless morning, Sarge. Let me explain. We had a plant, we called him the Ulsterman, at the Inland Revenue. It only gone and told us that the money was being siphoned off to Jersey or the Isle of Man or even to the Cayman Islands. I ask you. Now, me and Bigsy in the gang thought that's unfair because the revenue is raising money to pay for things like the NHS. And I said to the lads, I did, I said, one day people are going to be so appreciative of what the NHS does that they're going to stand on their doorsteps every Thursday evening clapping a show their respect for doctors and nurses what work in it and we agreed there and then to nick it to stop it getting nicked now i do admit that that sounds a bit careless very careless indeed so i'll tell you what how about we pay it back plus a bit of interest and some penalties and you and enid here forget about the whole thing we got a deal i have to warn you though it might take a bit to get all the bunts together I mean, floristry ain't the best paid job in the world now, is it? But I have got a cousin. He might be able to help. He's landed himself a nice little earner as a security guard at Brinks, Matt. 